intelligence of human beings offer them a special provision of understanding or distinguishing something which is salient or special in nature they consider few things very worthy few things very significant rest of the things are trivialized or taken away totally from a person's attention and consideration this is what we call prudence or sagacity in sanskrit which we make it as viveka the person's ability to distinguish things based upon its application or applicability and in this area only we have got something what is known as values value is something special value is something distinct distinguished as well as distinguishable in human perception especially when a person gains maturity as a product of his intelligence he understand that it has a value and value certainly is to be considered with sense of application we used to call it as in logics as ups system that which has a use that which has a purpose and use for example drugs are also used by people but that have no strong or consolidated purpose that has no definite or solid or constructive purpose so that's why we used to say ups analysis analyzing something to be useful and analyzing the used thing to be purposeful and analyzing the purposeful thing to be serviceable for mass benefit and welfare that which is to be used or that which is being used by people is known as value this is valuable because it is used by me it is really valuable because i am not only using it but i am having a definite purpose i am having a solid or constructive purpose for that it is not only confined with my particular or personalized purpose it is having some extension on a service so that it can be used for everybody's benefit so that which is a use purpose and extendable with a service format is known as a value it is generally but anything cannot be called as something value or valuable in nature you know that for example even abcd is knowledge but you cannot call an alphabetician as a knowledgeable person and few pennies are also part of richness and you cannot quantify the person to be a rich or a great aristocratic personality so something is determined as something valuable or value only because of three reasons according to the tradition one that which is having a sublime standard of value not any tinsel value everything is valuable even for a robber knife is valuable without which he cannot do his duty but we should understand it should have a sublime standard of purpose it should have perennial usage instead of transient usage or ephemeral usage it should have a perennial usage second thing it should be a foundation spirit and source for innumerable derivatives so even though everything is having its use purpose and service in the world only few things can be quantified and qualified as values provided they supply these three conditions it should be perennial it should be sublime or great in its standard third thing just as from a spring innumerable cascading flows are being promulgated from a single quality or single value thousands of derivatives should sprung so let us understand the basics of what we call value as a perennial shower as a sublime shower as a foundation or fundamental fountain for innumerable derivative showers that is what we call value what is the duty of religion what is the duty of philosophy and education what is the duty of governance what is the duty of morality what do you mean by ethics or spirituality all these things put together have a common minimal agenda to see that the futile dimensions are empowered the fragile things are empowered let us see how far we can make this formal division specialized by means of a special embrace let us see how the fatal society the society with adversity is transformed by an alchemical touch how the inner chemistry can make the people qualifiable and how the innermost alchemy can make the people transformable is known as religious ideology religion is meant for the purpose that's why we used to say gurus have four purposes great spiritual masters and social engineers or architects whom we call as swamis or mahants they have four purposes one is to teach if they are understanding and following to train them if they need personal attention and occupation to see that they can be transformed if they are incorrigible to terminate if they are totally unworkable to the society and its development they have four great potentialities within them to teach to train to transform and terminate point number 1 is already it has been explained that what we call values is values are nothing but parameters are symptoms of utmost superiority and social distinction which has the highest rate of social benefaction economic reforms are there political reforms are there social reforms are there caste reforms are there marginalized sections are there they are uplifted gender discrimination is there human rights is there innumerable people they are combating from innumerable dimensions of the society but the most 
sensitive, productive, and perennial benefaction can be brought only by values, bringing the values. To bring anything except values will be ephemeral and it will go adverse. It is only a time pass. It is only a partial benefit. So to bring value is the highest benefaction to society. But how to live can be modeled only by socio-religious personalities. Religious personalities with high social concern or the highest unpolluted or unconditional social concern, they will be the life models. So by inspiration, by inculcation, inculcation is by bodhana, udbodhana, samudbodhana, prabodhana, pravachana, udbodha, udvega, nididhyasana, manana, shravana, innumerable exercises have been enlisted. So by this process we can create inculcation in the society. Dissemination of my knowledge is inculcation. No need to speak. Seeing me itself is my life and it is a message that is known as inspiration. The third thing is aid, sharing of all of my available resources to everybody needed. Fourth is the power of Parivartana or Kranti, which we call transformation. This is what we call IIT, we have known IIT, like that it is known as IIAT. Inspiration, inculcation, aid and transformation, it is what we call social benefaction. So what do you call here by value? The power of anybody to be good in nature is not value. It is a person's personal possession. If I have taken something for my belly, I am satisfied. Value is something which permeates which infects, which spreads to every corner of the society where it is needed. So value is not something personal, value is not something that is sectarian or group in nature. It should permeate to every needed person. The distant personality should be benefited by that. So inculcating ability, inspirational ability, aid and transformational ability, all these things put together, that is what we call social benefaction. The problem with the modern ethics or values is, simply I want to put the second point. Everybody knows what is value. It is known to everybody, to be good, to be honest, to be friendly, to love, to forgive, to forget. Everything is known to everybody. It is known even to the kindergarten students. But the problem is, it is inactive in nature, inactive in nature. The first problem is, it is inactive. It is either conscient or verbal. I can speak about values, I cannot act. I think about values, but I could not express as well as expose and exhibit or execute the same. That is my first problem. Second thing is unilateral. I expect everybody to show their values to me, but I am not interested in showing or reciprocating mine. That is unilateral. So we have values, but they are inactive values. Number two is unilateral values. Number three, partial values. I am interested in only few values which does not affect my business, which do not affect my growth or political existence or something else, but is personal. I don't accept any other values. I accept puja, punaskara, worship, surrender, rituals and everything. But in my professional moral, I am not bothered about that. It's known as partial. Selective. Yes, I show love and affection. But what? I show my love and affection to my friends and relatives only. So that becomes partial, alloyed. I give, we, we know that. In Puranas also, mythology, we have seen a lot of characters like Karna. He was famous for his generosity. But he was the partner of crime in Women Harassment Act of concern with the Draupati. Along with the Duryodhana and other people, we know that. So it is alloyed. Even if a person is having some sort of value, it is polluted or alloyed by means of lack of some other value in some other dimension. So we are having that alloyed nature. And the last defect of values is, I know all values and practice, but I have no ability to transfer the value to my generation or the social generation. Transgenerational transmitting ability should be there with the person and I should be able to withstand or endure my values in spite of all of the combat courage. I have told innumerable things already. So these major things we should understand. Values, what we have to do as dynamic value engineering. We delivered a lecture, a special workshop was organized. The topic was value engineering. Like mechanical engineering, aeronautical engineering, it was known as value engineering. For that we should understand, values are not the problems of the society. Inactive nature, unilateral nature, partial nature, selective nature, unalloyed nature, and inability for expression and uh, transmission, these are all the various areas where we have to work for values, and religion is a very great potentiality for that. The qualifier elements are love, affection, compassion, and mercy. Love is our inclination towards greater personalities or admirable personalities. Affection is to equivalent or like-minded personalities. Compassion is towards the deficient personalities. And mercy is showered towards totally non-deserving, incorrigible, useless personalities. God has created these four pillars for human existence. It is known as global adhesive. Greater people, just love them. If they are like-minded people, prospering people, just be affectionate with them. If they are struggling and trying to upcome, those people, you can embrace them with your Sincere compassion. These people are total useless people, burdens of the society and blunders of God's creation. At least shower mercy on them so that they can be transformed. So this is how we can embrace the whole society. It is what we call the whole gamut of qualifier, knowledge, power and morale can be well distributed, well analyzed, well digested and executed only if we have the qualities of qualifiers of love, affection, compassion and mercy. 
if knowledge power and moral this triad is distributed by proper love proper love the right love in the right track for the right cause with the right person with the right volume in the right velocity it is only a fruit giver we love lot of people but that is totally immoral or displaced or misplaced love so love affection compassion mercy properly distributing knowledge power and moral will result in two consequential values known as peace and second is prosperity peace and progress brought by love affection compassion and mercy entering into the chambers of knowledge power and moral can only bring peace and harmony there is no other way nanya pantha there is no other way to bring that this order we should understand we are very much interested in the product we want paddy but we don't want the field we want milk but we don't want the cow how it is possible peace and harmony can be brought only by this hierarchy and what is the role of religion inside it this complete structure can be brought only by spirituality and religion is the compilation of all essential exercises to bring that spiritual experience and to establish the spiritual kingdom in the world religion and spirituality are inseparable in nature religion is a practice and spirituality is an experience religion is a tool and spirituality is a product somebody is thinking that spirituality is something air castle it is different from all the religions and other things spirituality is the experiential dim dimension it is the ecstatic dimension it is the self constructive or culminative dimension of what we call religion in nature finally i am going to quote three or four main points and end this issue with a proper conclusion which will be the beginning of bringing fructification or materialization of all of our efforts put together number one is religion why religion should be practiced was a question asked by even religious people religious aid is very much essential because it is like searching a dark cat inside a, a dark room when the person is blind without any light like that logically there used to be a lot of stories there should be some specification god is immeasurable unintelligible inscrutable ineffable in nature we are all very mortals mundane personality is confined to lot of errors innumerable errors for such people to have a strong grip and a very solid ladder to reach god religion has been constructed only by god himself religion is not a man made commodity it is a lord given or god given generosity or magnanimity it is a token of god's magnanimity rather than human construction ability or imagination it gives you 4g one is god special specific definition about god by which we can love him we can like him we can cling to his feet second thing is guidance material in the form of scriptures third thing is guide in the form of guru fourth is a definite goal in this life as well as that life these four g's are offered only by religion religion gives you alertness god is there he is always envisioning me he will punish me he will have his <coughs> contributive and retributive justice so it will create alert inside the person to be always following values second thing divine pattern if the person is really undergoing realization repenting and rectification god will excuse the person and see that the person is uplifted gradually third thing is anybody working with god he will have an additional special grant of vigor and power so that he can achieve things what is the difference between a person running and riding a bike a person is having the associate ability of the bike and the performance will be of the bike and the riding possibility or the riding thing is limited to the person the person just rides it but the performance is uh, skilled with the bike like that any person riding on the divine vehicle will have the performance ability of the god he is just an instigator or initiator or igniter of the divine mechanism so it shows additionality so let us create a continuous or an incessant shower of thought speech and action in the society by creating an assembly of perennial assembly or established assembly of what we call benevolent and moderate religious personalities union and the fourth thing is anybody not interested in this assembly not interested in appreciation and adoption of this quality should be unanimously excommunicated by us as they are doing excommunication but for our people they are doing excommunication it is happening somewhere different so today it is not the inauguration of some seminar it is the ignition ceremony of a renaissance that is going to happen in the world so is wherever you go the global society is no pluralistic in nature god has created a plural society somebody asked me why there are a lot of religions then i told that if you are really religious what is religion religion is the person's exercise to understand what is god's design and plan to understand god's mind setup and sankalpa we used to call it in sanskrit bhagavat sankalpa gnana avabodhanam tattva shastram ityuchyate different religions cultures and divisions we should understand that is its divine plan and any person's adoption innumerable religions are meant for their own permutation 
their own choices, their own gradual upgradation theory. Even if you say that some religion is higher, let him be there and gradually upgrade himself as per the theory of great upgradation told in Bhagavad Gita. Pluralism is the essential nature of the world. It is the divine design. If anybody is having the option to do, not by temptation driving, not by threat, not by coercive indoctrination, it should be a voluntary ship of understanding the greatness of the religion and submitting oneself to the doctrines and greatness. So let us create a world, moderate world, where there is a pluralistic collective coexistence possible. By Wherever I go, I safeguard the culture of the land. Whoever comes here, I'll see that their particular things are respected and not wounded, number two. Number three, non-interference, we will follow our things. Somebody told me all religions are equal. It's not like that. All religions are not identical in nature. Being identical and equal and following with each other with fraternity is not a miracle. We are different. This difference is God-made and it is something invisible and subtle in nature. It is God-made. Nobody can arrive to the end of any philosophical debate. In spite of being different, there are 10 reasons to be different. There are 1000 reasons to be united and work for the flaming world, the burning world. So let us create this non-interference and alignment policy for minimal common pro programming. That's what I used to say in a seminar. What is religion? If you see different people, we are annoyed. If you see distant people, you are irritated. If you see people, those who are above from us, immediately we are envying on them. Religion is a special metamorphosis exercise which makes the person to respect the greater people, to love the people, those who are along with them, and see that they can be merciful and extend their arms, mighty arms to the people, those who are downtrodden in nature. A proper, complete behavior in a plural society can be given only by a religious refinery. Religion has a power. Somebody told religion is already pure. How it is going to safeguard the world? Then he told that religion is having God as his head. God is the embodiment of supreme power. So religion has a power to maintain its own auto-cleansing as well as to cleanse political, economical and everything. All other systems of the society, they are dealing with mortals and materials, whereas religion is the only system dealing with the immortal God, the inexhaustibly potential chamber God. So religion has the power to cleanse itself as well as to cleanse everybody. Let us take this day an opportunity to see that we can travel at least to the minimum level. If you don't go to that level of magnanimity, develop tolerance. If you are developing yourself, go to fraternity. If you are fully mature, you will get into brotherhood. I start with tolerance. I mature and blossom with the sense of fraternity. Let us arrive at the brotherhood at the earliest century, at least in the next century we can arrive at that. I hope that today will be an auspicious occasion to declare that we are going to take, already we have been doing the same thing. Let us expedite our mission, accelerate and intensify our thoughts and mission and see that we can achieve the same thing. I wish that today it should be announced that that should be a permanent establishment for an international institute for interfaith studies. It should be mixed with uh, social empowerment, personal empowerment, uh, brain empowerment, emotional balancing. There are a lot of other electives needed for the society. It should be a bitter medicine given in sweet honey because initially interfaith studies are not very much interesting or earning for people. Let us create a society, let us create an institute today where people can have online education, intensive training and various other things. And India is a proper place for spreading that culture and we are all the proper people assembled here. Let us unite with the all other silent members who are in thousands expecting us in outside and let us see that we can create a very great potential qualitatively and quantitatively in the coming decade and achieve whatever we want and God is always awaiting our response and proper action to shower his immeasurable mercy and benedictions on us. Hope that we will achieve and my advanced congratulations for your mission success and institutions establishment. Narayan, Narayan, Narayan.